Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin Leppard, your online cello teacher, and I'm back today with another cello lesson for you guys. I want to show you some cool extended techniques, what are known as extended techniques. Just different things from the normal way of playing that I think are cool. They get used in compositions, they can get used in improvisation. It's just kind of cool to know what the cello can do, in my opinion. So, when we're used to thinking of a note being sort of this strong, warm thing. <laughs> And we usually play in the middle between the fingerboard and the bridge. But we can either play closer to the t uh, fingerboard or even on the fingerboard, and that's called soltasto. And it's a much lighter sound. I've heard cellists use soltasto when they're playing some sort of Baroque music so that it's a lot less scratchy and light the way that an older instrument, which didn't have as much power as the modern bow, might have been able to do. So, you know, instead of... Uh so it just has that like lighter feel to it. The opposite thing you can do is you can play close to or even a little bit on the bridge. Now, this can be a little bit cat scratch, nails on the chalkboard sort of feeling for people, but when used appropriately, it adds a ton of really awesome color to what you're doing. So in a classical setting, you're either going to use that when the music asks for it and it says in the music, Sol Pont or Sol Ponticello, which is what it's called. Or you can use it a little bit if you're merely trying to get a little bit more aggression in what you're doing. So, for example, you might consider being a little bit more Sol Ponticello if you have a really bold statement in music. So this would be normal. But I can err on this more on the side of Sol Ponticello without actually going too crazy. And it creates a little extra buzzing or, you know, some sort of really just strong character that otherwise would not be as achievable with the normal way of bowing. So some other things that you can do with the bow, sometimes it's written, uh, and this is a very, very contemporary thing, to move the bow, scrape the bow along the string, so you get this kind of... If you just do it uh, completely straight, you get kind of like the same sound as with your voice going... If you guys know that one, so you can kind of like... The other thing you can do with the bow, though, is overpressure it. So this exists in a lot of different forms. You can either have overpressure that's still somewhat pitched and goes in between, but that's very nasally. You can have a very controlled version of overpressure that's called subharmonics, where you can actually get a note to ring out that's almost an octave below what you're playing because what you're doing is choking the string and it's only vibrating that much. So let's see if I can do this. It's a very unstable technique, but uh, so we have that B. So we're going to hear basically the open C string when we do this. I'll do it here so that it's a lot clearer that it's not just the C string ringing out. See, that's much lower than the cello can ordinarily play, almost as low as a bass, but it's also very unstable. So for this reason, it's definitely a contemporary sort of extended technique. Now, other, other techniques that are more common, but they're still extended techniques, include various pizzicato techniques. So either doing, and actually any pizzicato is originally an extended technique, but if you're using two finger pizzicato, or if you're doing a, what's called a Bartok pitz, where you put two fingers around the string and you lift up um, just enough to actually snap the string into the fingerboard. It's something that sounds really, really intense, but because of the strength of the ebony fingerboard, doesn't actually hurt the instrument if done properly. Similarly, while harmonics are a intrinsic property of the string and have been used for a long time, you know, in their natural form, what are called natural harmonics are the ones where you just touch one finger to the string and you're getting an overtone series of the open string. But there's also artificial harmonics where you basically take advantage of the two octave harmonic, put your thumb down, in place of where the, the open string would have been and continue to have the relative distance of that major fourth, which is the distance between the open G string and your fourth finger. So it's called a touch four harmonic. It's two octaves above the string. And it's that that we would move when we do the artificial harmonic because you have... And what's really nice about that is you get a lot of control. You can play any melody you want. You can vibrato like I did at the end a little bit. And all the normal rules of playing a harmonic apply. The normal rules of playing any note. The higher the note is, the closer you play to the bridge. 
So if you're trying to get harmonics to speak in the low register, then play closer to the bridge. And one little trick about playing harmonics is that they work in both directions. So the octave harmonic is in the dead center, so there's no opposite. But then if you go, uh, if you go up to the fifth, that's actually the same as doing it here. It's the exact same harmonic because you're still dividing the string into thirds. Well, and I don't know if it'll be easy enough to see, but you can actually see on your own cello if you let that harmonic ring out that the string is vibrating in thirds and basically doesn't vibrate at the point of the harmonics. So if you keep going up, you can do that backwards too. But the trick to getting them to speak is, uh, well, exact finger placement and then also making sure that your bow's going towards the bridge. So there's some other really kind of like funky and out there extended techniques. There's a lot of uh, percussion techniques. Some people get really good at, at tapping the cello. And even though I love like rhythm and drums in music, for some reason, the coordination has always been wonky for me. But if you kind of like, you can get kind of like a bass sound down here various control over the snare. The nice thing is the cello is already a very resonant instrument. Now one little secret percussive trip, trick that another uh, cellist taught me is you can get a rim shot off the side here. So if you relatively, you know, lightly, but still moderately heavily tap your finger along both the edge and the middle here, you get this amazing resonant wood block sound. So that one's pretty awesome. I love that one a lot. I may have talked on this channel before about how to execute a chop, uh, which would be used more in contemporary uh, blues descended music and that sort of thing. But basically the idea with a chop is you wanna drop the bow and then scrape it a little bit. So if you just drop the bow, you don't really get a chop. So you have to choose to either chop horizontally, which is very nice for getting something that um, has a lot of like, you can almost hear the little pitches in it. And if you want something a little drier, you can scrape down. So that one's a lot drier, but it also doesn't have as much low end. So you can kind of like vary those as you will. Well, the really cool thing about chops and the thing that can kind of make them tricky is that the exact placement of where you hit it will change the sound. So you can get like a, you will get a slightly different hit every single time you do that. Um, I've never really found a way to do it exactly the same. It's always a little different. And for that reason, it's pretty cool, I think. One technique that's used a lot in classical music is um, some sort of ricochet or up bow staccato where you basically bounce the bow in place of playing back and forth. If you were to uh, really put your bow in the string and really use your wrist to move, you can get the bow to bounce without the hairs going off the string. And that's called sautier. But you can also get that by doing a ricochet. So either a down bow ricochet where if you really practice it and know what the music is asking for, you can actually get, you know, any number that you want. And then the other thing is upper staccato. And for that, you bring your wrist extra pronated and you lead with your wrist. That sort of thing. And in certain moments, it makes it really powerful with the music. That out of context moment, I don't know if that was that cool, but it can be used very, very cool in a certain context. Finally, I'll talk about uh, one other sort of contemporary way that you can play the cello. Um, these are things that uh, I've been working on a while, and you know, from time to time, there's gonna be a cellist that wants to play a cello like a guitar. And it's really not that hard, but the thing that makes it different from a normal guitar is that a guitar is flat, it has a flat bridge and the cello has a curved bridge. So if I bring the cello up here, the thing that's going to make it tricky is that if I just strum, I'm not getting the top notes. Or if I strum here, I'm not getting the low notes. So you have to work on strumming in the curved way. And what I think really works well is to think about an arch that goes like this, so that as you strum higher, you also go closer to the bridge. And then that works really well for me. You'll just want to practice not actually hitting the fingerboard when you're just trying to get a strum. The other thing that's going to be different is the left hand shape. You're not going to quite be able to do the normal left hand shape. I think it works quite nicely actually to just bring the hand out and have it be kind of curved. Um, I've sort of just adapted to using that different thing, but you really have to then listen and then still have the mental grid of where you are. But it's really cool because uh, you have major and minor patterns just like on a guitar. So if you bar one 
and then put your third finger down, that's a major chord. Or if you go uh, one string below and then put your fourth finger on top, that's also a major chord, which ends with the tonic on top. If you keep everything the same and bring your second finger to the top string, you have a dominant seventh chord. If you bar your first two and then bar the, your second finger over the top two, you have a minor seven, which you can also achieve by doing one, four, two. I know that this went by really quickly and maybe I'll do a video that goes more in depth with how to do the guitar thing if people are really interested in it. But for now, I think that's all that I have for you guys today. I just wanted to show you some different extended techniques uh, in a few different genres from classical to modern sort of blues and rock sort of stuff. And I hope that that was fun to watch. I've always enjoyed how versatile cello is. And I think that what's awesome about it is that it can fit into so many different musical contexts. So I'm sure that that is something that a lot of viewers are also really attracted to about cello. And hopefully this video helps you get at it a little bit more. Hope that you guys are staying subscribed for all our videos. Once again, I'm, my name is Justin Leopard. I'm also known as the Vagabond Cellist. And this is Higher Hertz. So subscribe below for more cello lessons. This is where they're going to be at. Let us know in the comments how things are going for you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.